Hello, this is just a, another cool possible workflow tip video, f especially for environment artists. Um, so this is displaced geometry, and this is in the EV engine. This is something that would have to be modified further, but um, if you've come across the EV displace method, it's basically just a bunch of different planes. Um, that's your resolution and it's just using alpha to cut away at the negative space from like a height map or something. So backing up, there's this uh, free shader from a user named Ben on Gumroad. Um, it's called the Blender Real-Time Shader Displacement for EV. It's free, uh, but if you download this, you'll go, you'll enter this scene. Um, and if you look closely, you can see like all the you know the layers. It's kind of like a kind of like a 3D printed kind of method, but it's just creating all these planes with an array modifier and cutting away at the negative space from the height map. So here's the height map, plugging right into this height, and you can change the strength of it, the mid level and stuff. Uh, if you wanted, you could you know increase the resolution. So this added, you know, 50 more planes. If I turn up the strength, you can see that. If I go back down to 50, it'll like cut it off. So we added more resolution. Um, so if we zoom out, it's, uh, yeah. Anyway, so that's at a very surface level. That's how this shader works. But I thought, it would be cool to use this for, you know, I'm I'm using a lot of EV right now, and this seems like the best approach for displacement on, you know, what would be heavy geometry to just create. Um, so I'm just basically taking this plane, I copied and pasted it over, it's set up in a very specific way. You could get rid of this plane offset, all this is is just like, you know, how much how much to offset these uh, the planes of this you could get rid of that and just use a relative offset zero there and just oh sorry not relative it would be constant offset there we go so I'm, I'm just using the constant offset there in the Z to increase my resolution and stuff so anyway I just copied and pasted this plane um, and I'm just using the same material setup and over here um, so I created a just a generic, got just a height map with a bunch of shapes here, um, and then export that height map and bring it over to Blender. So plug the height map, obviously in the height map channel there. And what's nice is you don't have to have a dense amount of geometry like this. Is no cuts in it. This is just a simple plane, and to move the UVs around, I think this is this is the magic of it. It's it's so performant, and it gives such a good idea of where everything's going to be in the end. Like I I wouldn't keep this all the way to the end. Um, I would at the end when I know where I want my geometry, I would basically apply it by. Well, I'll I'll get into that right now. Maybe I just need to back up for a sec. So here I just I got it to where I wanted it to be. And then I start cutting out uh certain, you know, rocks that I wanted. Fill that back in. Uh just with the knife tool, just cutting around and then deleting faces and stuff. And um then when I'm happy with what I've got here like this would be useful for something like a you know a roof material or something where you got tiles and you need to like cut off where those last tiles are on the end um and I had to do that previously and this is this part of the reason why I'm quite fascinated with this workflow is I wish I could have gone back and do it again a little bit when I have things where I want it I can then take this over I just turn off the array modifier because I'm not going to be using the array anymore. I just make a new, uh, we're going to use the displace modifier to displace the height now that I have things where I want it. 
I'm just going to apply this geometry. So uh, I just make a new texture, just hit new, and then load in your height map. And once you've done that, we need to add a displace modifier. Uh, add the texture coordinates set to UV and now we need to add some resolution so this is the drawback with using the displace method if you're not tessellating or something like that um, the drawback is having to work with that high uh, density of geometry all the time whereas this method I could just keep it as a plane like this and just you know cut it up and get rid of certain faces and all that so once we have this where we want we can add more resolution you can just subdivide it or cut it up whatever I'm just going to use hard ops as dice tool um, is it Y so I have it on the X and the Y and now it's very dense I could go denser if I needed to but um, we're, we're getting appropriate uh, shapes now or displacement uh, the normals are weird because uh, this has a normal map on it because these are all flat planes, right? Um, but this is actual displaced geometry, so it's we need to take the normal map off. Once we take that off, you know we don't need the normal map to help us direct where those the shading is going to be. The surface is already there, so it's we don't need that normal map. Anyway, so now like I could apply this. And there's my geometry, and then, you know, I could add like a decimate modifier. Things down to point uh, one, and you know that would be my geometry. I mean, this isn't very clean, but um, try point two or something. And you can mess around with the shading and everything like that, like create some hard edges and things, do some cleanup after this. But uh, to get, you know, generic shape, you'd, I mean, you'd, we don't even really need the height map and stuff. But now we don't need any of these material inputs. Um, but yeah, this is how you could get some shape. You bake, you know, you export a height map, you create a height map and then just use the displace modifier or something but to edit things and to cut up where you need it to end and things you can just do with this really clean easy modifier so if I like if I duplicate this over and let's just turn off the array put a displace on add my texture change it to UV and Let's see. Now I'm just gonna. Well, let's just use the dice thing again. Dice, and then really just scroll up. Just gonna wait for it to apply. Maybe I didn't hit apply. There we go. So my geometry is pretty dense. And if I wanted to change this, I mean, unless you've got like a supercomputer, this is not the friendliest to play with. It's possible, you know, and you don't have to change UVs and stuff. But now I also have to work with all this geometry too. And I have to select all this. I can't just like make easy cuts and things where I want it to be terminated. Um, but you know, I, I could still like apply that, hit a decimate on, and then do my cleanup that way. So yeah, this is what I did on a roof tile material, this method. And I mean, it was okay, but I had to work with a dense amount of geometry for a while and Maybe I could have just gotten away with something like this. So, anyway, if I didn't want this banding, uh, you could just increase the amount of. Um, you can either push this in, but I could take this up to 100. And then in 
the material, just increase the strength to push it all the way to the last layer, like that. And then just bring this in. And I could do that again and again and again. But still, like moving on this is very performant. So anyway, just uh, just the cool little trick I thought I'd share. It was a fun uh, discovery for me. So anyway, hope it help. Hope it helped. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. I guess. <laughs> See ya.